welcome to the third installment of HGI News and Entertainment. Our first story is about HGI's 5-6 Choir and their amazing Christmas concert collaboration with the Winnipeg Philharmonic Choir. After months of preparation, HGI's 5 and 6 Choir put on an amazing performance at the Philharmonic's Christmas concert. Well, um, I received a call in the spring of last year, which is 2012, from the, the executive director of the Philharmonic Choir and they had heard about our school and that we were a singing school and they invited us, they invited me to choose a choir to sing at their um, 2012 Christmas concert called Holiday Memories and I gladly in, said yes to the invitation. The students, led by Miss Yatchison, sang to a crowd of over a thousand people. The concert was so fantastic. The kids sang absolutely beautifully. They were fantastic. They were able to perform in front of over a thousand people in, in this beautiful church, uh, the Westminster Church in Winnipeg, uh, and they their songs were just amazing. There was over 75 grade fives and sixes, and they were like a professional choir. Um, I thought that they sang with a really beautiful tone quality. They were really well in tune. They watched the conductor, they didn't fidget, and they just looked like angels. It involved many guest artists, one including Tracy Dahl, a world-known soprano singer, and uh, various people spoke at the concert of their holiday memories, and the choir sang as the only guest choir, the children's choir. So yes, it was a great success, it felt wonderful, and the students saying better than I ever could have imagined. I think they felt very proud. Um, probably about singing and getting to see everyone clap and everything. It was fun. Like, I was nervous at the first time, but I liked the songs. The students were greeted with a standing ovation at the end of their set. Our second story explores the skateboarder's conflict between safety and style. We're going to skate to one song, one song only. In recent years, Ace Jazz School has started to let people skateboard outside the school. However, since helmets are required, the level of participants has been virtually non-existent. I think skateboarders at HGI refuse to wear a helmet because uh, they don't wear a helmet anywhere else, even at skateboard parks, at the plaza, at the forks, uh, anywhere where they're skating, skating in videos. Uh, it is not considered part of the skateboarding ideal to wear a helmet. So when they come to school and they have to wear a helmet, uh, it just doesn't fit what they're used to doing, so it becomes uh, more of an issue than maybe it should be. Whether they're at a skate park, on their driveway, or filming a trick for a video, skateboarders do not like wearing helmets. Um, I don't wear a helmet. I've never worn a helmet, I guess. I don't know. When I started skateboarding, started watching videos, nobody was wearing helmets, so I didn't think that you had to wear a helmet or it was even worth wearing a helmet. So. I don't wear a helmet when I skate street or park. I just don't wear a helmet. I don't know. It's just like not the style, I guess. I don't see people with skate videos or just other pro skaters wearing helmets in any contests or anything like that. So I don't wear a helmet either. Like usually I don't. I just don't like how they're all big and like bulky. And I don't really see all my like favorite skaters wearing helmets and stuff. So I just try and copy them. We don't really want to wear helmets, but when they tell us to, we just get off the property and stuff. I understand your school's perspective, why they want you to wear a helmet, because for liability reasons, if you were to hurt yourself and die, if you hit your head and you died, that's your school's fault for not enforcing a helmet, you know what I mean? So I understand where they're coming from to make you wear a helmet, but I think I'd probably do what you do and go skate somewhere else. Yeah. Almost all skateboarders believe a law that requires the use of helmets is unnecessary and should be an individual choice. Definitely think helmets are good for kids starting out that haven't learned how to fall yet. 
like I definitely encourage parents when they come in here to get their kid a helmet when it's the first time he's skating because if he falls and hits his head it's it's going to discourage him for the rest of his life but once the kid gets comfortable and he's falling and he knows how to save himself and he's not hitting his head and he's not smacking his helmet on the ground then I think it should be his choice or his parents choice to take off the helmet and not wear a helmet so no, I don't think they should have to wear helmets. It's just like, it should be like <laughs> you're someone else's choice, like your parent guardian or yourself. It would be your fault for your mistakes. Telling a skateboarder to wear a helmet is like telling a gymnast or a figure skater to wear a helmet at the Olympics. While all three sports are dangerous and require amazing skill to execute elite tricks and routines, only skateboarders have to consistently deal with the decision of style over safety. At HGI, however, the decision has already been made. Our next story takes a look back at the impact that another artist in the school had on HGI's students. In November, HGI had a special guest. Part of the Manitoba Artists in the School program, Dr. Nario Eugenio helped students in art and public speaking. My name is Dr. Strange. And I am... No, my real name is Nario Eugenio. I go by Dr. Strange, it is my performance name, and I'm here as part of the Artists in the Schools program, uh, funded through the Manitoba Arts Council, and well, basically I'm here to just incorporate the arts into the school curriculum and um, introduce something a little new. Um, the presence of Mr. Nerio Eugenio was really beneficial. Um, one thing he really, guys, uh, really got you guys to do was take your thoughts and your ideas, put them on paper, and then actually be able to voice them. And not only voice them, but voice them in a really creative way. Dr. Nerio's presence impacted the students' ability to give good presentations and draw creatively. And a lot of them who spoke about their own performance had said that they've had issues with public speaking and have expressed a lot of fear in the beginning of the workshop and they've also said that over the course of two weeks they've become very comfortable with being up in front of the classroom. Uh, we worked on a lot of public speaking, we worked on a lot of presence, um, being in front of your peers which is definitely a, a valuable skill that uh, you guys really really worked on and it was very visible that you guys improved a lot in terms of that and it's a really scary a really scary thing to kind of get up in front of people who you know, who are your friends. Um, I learned that making lots of hand gestures in your uh, poem makes it a better presentation. I learned the importance of public speaking. My favorite part was when he showed us pictures of his artwork. During the time that Dr. Nario was here, students learned valuable skills pertaining to expression and better artwork. I think I'm leaving a good impression. At least I'd like to think so. I hope I, hope I am. Um, I've already been asked if I'll be coming back next year. So that tells me I've done a good job. Finally, we end with an interview with former HGI student and current NHL player for the Nashville Predators, Colin Wilson. Sending in Craig Smith, the leg one. Leg one across, Colin Wilson. He scores! Team wrap with Colin Wilson. Colin Wilson shoots! And Sanford comes across but can't get it. And he was checked in Ellis to center ice for Hortquist. Into Wilson, right in a shot. He scores. Colin Wilson. David Langlois. Back in front, Colin Wilson scores. Wilson on the deflection. How was growing up in Winnipeg and playing hockey as a kid? It was great, especially uh, coming back here now brings back memories. Um, it was so cold out that all I did was go and play outdoor hockey, which is great. I think if you look at Americans and other like people play the game, if they don't get to play outdoor hockey. It's not nearly as fun, so it was great being here and you know playing for the Monarchs and living in White Ridge. What is it like to be a Kerry Wilson son? Like, what was it like to be Kerry Wilson son as a kid? It was funny being Kerry Wilson son as a kid. It had disadvantages and advantages just because uh, I got ripped on by everybody saying I only made hockey teams because I was Kerry Wilson's son, and that uh, I was just basically put on everything because of him. So that that wasn't great, but obviously being an NHLer's son, I learned a lot of stuff. I Nobody else got to learn, which helped me out and grow as a player, but everybody was in his hockey camp, so. Yep. What was your favorite moment in your hockey career as a kid? As a kid? Yeah. I think, uh, I think the first, first one and most exciting was when I won my first city championship at 9A1. 
Uh, I remember winning that, and then the Twins the following year. Those were both awesome times. And anytime we got to win a championship, which for our, our year was most years, because we just had a really good hockey team. Who was your favorite NHL player growing up, and why? Yarmer Yager, because he had the best hands and best flow. So I think uh, I don't know. I just felt, found him extremely interesting. He was just unbelievable. He's really big, versatile, and I mean, I just like anybody who has hands. I think that's the most exciting stuff to watch. So. Oh, what's it like playing against Zdeno Chara? Zdeno Chara is extremely strong. He's the strongest guy in the league. The only guy who rivals him is uh, Shea Weber. And even then, like when you try to get a puck off Zdeno Chara or throw a shoulder into him, there's not much you can do about it. He doesn't move. I, I remember trying to reverse hit him one time, and I just hit a brick wall and fell down. So haven't tried that since. But yeah, he's a he's a big man with a hard shot. How did you feel when you scored your first NHL goal? Relieved. It was, it was more of a relief. It was the exact same thing with my first college goal. I was just so excited to finally get it over with. Um, and mine happened to come in Boston where I went to college. So um, it was exciting because I had about 20 of my friends there. So it was nice to get my first goal there. And if, if you look it up, it's an awful goal. Just awful. So it just lag on the line. It was probably going in on its own. And I just basically went and tapped it in. So, um, What was your reaction when the Jets came back? I was excited and just couldn't wait to play, and I think I was more excited for the city. I think everybody loves hockey, and especially having played um, in the NHL, you know, going to certain places like Phoenix and Atlanta and just seeing how nobody's in the stands, it really disappointed me with how many people love hockey here. So, um, yeah, it was awesome to get him back and can't wait to play my first game. Um, is there a reason why you're sticking around and not uh, going in the KHL? Yeah, um, I didn't want to go over to Europe because every single time I went thought about it, I heard that week that we were getting back. So, I mean, there were so many ups and downs that throughout this lockout that I keep thinking to myself that uh, what's the point in going if I'm coming back? So, um, you know, by January we'll know whether we're playing or not. So that's when I'll be making my decision.